What is up, MFs? Welcome back to the Snake Pit with Rattlesnake Roy. This is episode 192. Today my guests are Carlos Pagan and William Butler. Um, I met them doing a little, like, two-second role in their in Carlos's upcoming short film, Left for Dead. And William's an actor in it, so that's kind of what we talked about in this whole episode. We talked about the film itself, what it was like to do it, the process. And then we kind of talked about movies, acting, all of that. I had a really good time. And um, uh, I'm very appreciative that he gave me that opportunity to go out there and learn and be around these creative people. So that was really fun. And I think this episode is really good. And I'm, I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. So please be on the lookout for Left for Dead. Um, right now, the details aren't clear on where that's going to be released and when. But be on the lookout. Follow us. And we'll, um, we, all four of us in this podcast will probably post it. So be on the lookout, guys. Um, if you're new, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That is the best way you can help us out. It is free. It's easy. And we need to get those numbers up. Um, I also have a Patreon. That's uh, patreon.com slash snakepitstudios where you can get extra bonus episodes of um, the other podcasts I do, which is Pirate Radio. And you can follow that on iTunes and Spotify for free episodes. And then um, I have a website. Uh, the snake pit rattlesnake roy.com we're on twitter we're on instagram we're on facebook and tiktok so thank you guys and um, i hope you enjoy so okay. let's get her done you ready i'm i'm here man all right man who am i here with carlitos antonito paganino but you can call me carlos carlos man or los i'm trying to get that going los that's what you are on instagram huh? <clears throat> yeah people used to call me los and i didn't like it and now for some reason i want people to call me los again sweet dude so can you kind of give us an idea of what you do and well, all of that i work in insurance <laughs> but we won't talk about that today um i raised some money for uh on a kickstarter my you remember you know jordan uh he helped with that so we got a 3k budget for a short film because i'm a filmmaker and that's kind of what i've always been about and yeah that's that's why we're here i made a movie this week with my guy will butler over here yeah, man can you introduce yourself what please what up my name's will i played uh mitch in left for dead and um i don't know go to texas tech graduate in december so yeah hell yeah so today's uh saturday so that's why we don't have jennifer in the seat next to me so you can fill in right now all right that's that awesome <laughs> you're the co-host for the day sick hell yeah dude so tell me about the film how was that it's Man, exciting dude honestly one of the most surreal experiences of my life um just having gone from like writing it i mean even just getting the nerve to write it because at the time i was like not really feeling like putting a script together i was like eh, i don't know if i'm like writing it if i'm gonna like how it turns out all the way to like seeing it come to fruition and all the crazy stuff that we did and put together. I call it, I mean, crazy for me and like crazy for, we had horses, we did, I'm gonna call it a stunt. We did one stunt involving some like somebody hanging. That's when I I walked up into that right yeah, in the man, middle of it all. Shut up and like, <laughs> that was wild. One of the hypest, stressiest, most surreal, weird, crazy days of my life. <laughs> but um, it was, it was a great experience the whole thing was a blessing i'm really grateful to everybody for helping out so dude that's crazy yeah like yeah. i said we I, as soon as i got there that guy was hanging from a tree i was like what the fuck <laughs> this is what i'm walking into this is cool yeah Hell yeah so it's called left for dead right mm -hmm. uh, when did that start coming up like how did when did you get the idea to do that um so it happened i was working on a comic book right and i made like I was actually working on putting together a Kickstarter to raise money to film a video about this comic book. Um, but on the side, because I, well, I had just moved to Lubbock and Lubbock is such a cool place. Like it's got, it's very different from where I'm from, which was Houston. And so I'd always lived in bigger cities like Houston, Dallas or uh, Austin. And so I, when I got to Lubbock, I was thinking about this comic book and stuff, but the environment and the vibe and everything really put me in like a, you know, Western set of mind with uh, thinking about movies like um, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly or like The Hateful Eight, like all that kind I of like stuff. I like the movie. Yeah. And, the, all, and so I'm just like, man, it, it, and it just happened. I just started writing like a short story based on an idea I had when I was a kid. Um, so I shared my comic book ideas and everything with a friend of mine, a classmate. 
Um, and she was like, wow, that's cool. You working on anything else? And so I was like, well, I'm working on a little short Western short story, but I don't think I'm going to film it. And she was like, well, I just, you know, I just got a degree in film production at Full Sail University and stuff. I'll help you. I'll help you produce it. And so like she helped, she was like the driving force behind the pre-production to like get the money together and get everything ready. She wasn't really, um, you know, around for the production part of it. But anyways, that's kind of how it started. She kind of lit that fire to, to get me to like write a screenplay version of the short. Um, and we just kind of went from there. How long ago was that? That was like that initial conversation was in 2020. I want to say guesstimate around July, September. Yeah. So I've not, I'm not, I'm from here, born and raised. I've lived here all my life, pretty much. So yeah. that's is that like the vibe people get when they come to this sorry this well, part of Texas? When you're you know a guy I mean? like me who's like really nerdy into movies and like I, because that's that's my main medium. Like I draw caricatures and I I I'm, I dabble in music and stuff, but film and like writing, that's what I want to do career wise. So that's just kind of how my brain works. When I go places, there's part of my brain that's like what could be filmed here like what's so anyways but yeah y'all definitely got that western feel i mean the the wide open fields and like the weather alone you get you got dust storms like haboos. you guys got one during the week did you probably <laughs> like when you were filming there was it's, one during... it's a blur <laughs> yeah no maybe yeah hell yeah dude i was so uh about the film how many how many different locations did y'all film at Huh. Um, we filmed at my sister's in-laws' house, Jared and Carrie, amazing people. Um, the one location, Spirit Ranch. Shout out to them. I didn't know that place existed. That was a cool place. This is awesome. Did uh, you see the peacocks walking around? Yeah, that's what I heard. No, Apparently they're like really old. They're mean. Oh, peacocks. I, are mean. I just, I just mean little bastards. I had a traumatic experience with a peacock in first grade. I just <laughs> what happened? No, it wasn't a big deal. I just got scared because I was like looking at it. I was like, "Oh, what, it's so cool!" And then it opened up the thing, and it just my mind broke. I was oh, just like, shit. "No!" I what started crying. <laughs> so, and he's obviously a peacock. I'm like, respect, respect. You Looks got like me. open up the feathers worked. Yeah, right. It scared me away. <laughs> um, so yeah, Spirit Ranch, uh, their house, uh, another family member's backyard. Oh, was that it? No, no, Four Bar K. Yeah, we, yeah, Four Bar K yesterday. yesterday. What is that? Four Bar K is a really great ranch. Um, and they also have a, a wedding and event venue where you can get lunch from 11.30 to 2, Monday through Friday. For 12 bucks, you get some amazing barbecue, all the beans, all the chips and salsa, all that that you want. And you get free beer and wine as well. While listening to really good live music. And the y- y'all should go next Friday. Did you <laughs> or, know about that? Or sometime mm-hmm. this week. I didn't know. No, definitely go. It's owned by... Chuck Kirshner, who, who who runs the ranch, and he personally serves you your uh, the the beef and the sausage. Oh, I don't shit. know if it's the same meal That's every awesome. week. Or very good eating, um, and the interior is perfect for a Western film. So, so like these locations, did you have to did you have to pay to well the other for two, Spirit not, not ranch, the family ones? But yeah, the, no, the, the Spirit other. Ranch one we, I did uh, that was part of what we spent the money on. Um, and then what else? Four bar K, they, they charged me too, but they didn't charge me by the hour. It was just like a flat fee. But man, finding those locations was definitely. Uh, yeah. How did you find those locations? I didn't even know those fucking existed. Well, I just started researching and I was doing it in Florida. Like I wasn't even in town to be, cause, cause I moved to Florida in February. And so I've been there at my parents' house, just, you know, hanging with family. Um, so I was just on the phone calling places, trying to find stuff and, you know, just kind of, so I, I must've called, talked to 15 different places, different. Somebody here? Chris is here. Well, he's already too late now. <laughs> was he going to be on a podcast? Hey, he was. Look at him. What's he doing? Chris, what the hell? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, sick. But yeah, going back to what you were saying about, Hello? about, I guess this environment makes you want to write a film. There's a, a singer that came from here. Uh, his name's Joe Ely. He was with the band called the Flatlanders, and he was quoted saying that, you know, he, he's not he's from he, born and raised here, but he moved. He lives in Austin now, mm-hmm. but he has said that this town, uh, you know, it makes you want to write a song. 
And I, I, I feel yeah. like that applies to the same when it comes to film, where it makes yeah. you want to go out and shoot a film. It's it's really cool. And then part of it, too, what inspired me, or however you want to call it, um, is I knew that There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Men. No Country for Old Men, too. Yeah, I love them both. Yeah, so both they so both, uh, they were shot in like West Texas. <laughs> shout, out, shout, shout out West Texas. Shout Alpine out West Texas. Texas. <laughs> Morpha, Texas. That's where it was shot. Boom. Like the, like, like the yeah, actual yeah, town, West Texas? Is that what it was? What's that? Like the actual town, West Texas? No, no, no. Or this area? Like it was, so it's West Texas, but it's a little more south from here. So Yeah. It's like, yeah. You know where Midland and, and Odessa are? Yeah. You go like southwest another two hours. That's where it is. That's damn near Mexico. That's right? like, damn near Mexico. That's uh, like true maybe in desert Texas over there. Yeah. Dude, dry and mountainous. So I like drove here crazy out there when I moved from Houston and like on the 10 hour drive up here, I was like, I think this looks like no country for old men. This looks like there will be blood. So when I, by the time I got here, I was already thinking like, what kind of Westerns could be shot? And those two films were shot at the same time. You remember you telling us about that? And uh, cause then there will be blood. There was the explosion scene where they have the big old black cloud. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No country for old men. They had to like wait until that completely cleared. Wow. So they could film. <laughs> Yeah, filming is so <laughs> it's rewarding, but it's 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 it'll put, it'll put a toll on you. You know, well, is this the, f- the first film you've ever done or have you done one before? I want to say yes, because this was on another level, but I've always been shooting videos. I mean, I've, I've done short films before. I did a short film called The Pier in Houston. Um, I did a feature film in high school. That's a whole other story. <laughs> but in Austin, I was doing mu- mostly music videos just for like buddies of mine that were musicians it wasn't anything like you would see anywhere but that that was kind of my film school because I, I went to ut to learn uh not to learn uh, <laughs> um, so i went to ut for like a year and a half and i dropped out but i was there in the rtf program um so i ended up dropping out or whatever and just decided to like work i worked at the alamo draft house watching movies every day repeatedly the same movie and those the, the combination of those experiences is, is what i draw from when it comes to like doing this stuff how how was the rtf program at ut i mean at the time this was like 10 years ago at the time i thought it was great you know i thought it was cool the teachers are cool everything was cool it's just really expensive yeah and i I, because i went went to tech and i graduated with creative media industries yeah and ut was always like my dream school right but yeah like you're you're right it is expensive yeah but uh, I've always been wanting to go there for grad school eventually, but would you Do even it, say, like, would you still say getting that UT education still worth it? I mean, if it's not going to put you out of like, you know, if you can afford it, do it. Yeah. Like for sure. And if, if, and even if you can't afford it, if you really want to, if you know that's something that you want to achieve, I'm always going to say like, go for it. Yeah. Why not? Of course. Yeah. But yeah, okay. if it's going to put you and your whole family in the debt, like that you're not going to recover from, I'm going to say maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> uh, one of my professors, uh, he went to grad school at, at UT and we will always talk about it. And um, he was just saying that, you know, that the, the UT experience, like it's so amazing. That's what everyone you know strives the to go to yeah when, when you want to become a film and like they've um uh, you know invested so much money into that program yeah. just to become one of the top i liked it i schools. liked it a lot because other other schools i've been to and like at tech their media departments focus on um they don't focus on film it's like specifically. News, it's, it's about journalism mm-hmm. or you know different different things tech like has that. a good journalism program don't they and not to knock that at all like that's great to have um, but personally, I always just was like, no, I want to work in film. So, I want to write stories and be in So artist. Texas is like the, the University of Texas, is like the place to be for that. In Texas, it's yeah. up there. You know, it's definitely up there. Especially for public schools, because I mean, A&M's not doing, you know, I mean, there's stuff like that. I know there's like, Baylor. That school too. UNT and Denton has a really good program, too. Yeah. There's a couple other ones, but I, from what I understand, UT is like the best one. Yeah. And I'll be damn because I minor. Um, <laughs> you really doesn't like YouTube. <laughs> I could care either way. I don't. I don't know. And, and I minored in uh, in acting as well. And the head oh, of the word. in the head of the acting department, um, his name's Dean Nolan. Uh, we've talked about it, and he plans on trying to get a stage built at Tech. So they there's actual they should, man. like settings where you could sh- shoot like there's a, a set. A, there's such an artist community here in Lubbock that I feel like there's still so much room for more opportunities to be present for them, especially at tech with the film department, because when you have such a strong music artist 
writer community and like stage uh, stage plays, theater and stuff like that. That's like fertile ground for a film community to come from because that's what it takes. It takes all that combined to make a film. Um, so I know the day that tech has like a solid film department, we're going to see a lot of films come out of here because it's so the views everywhere is really cinematic. Some people might think it's just boring, flat feels. Bro, the sunset every night was just sunset. absolutely breathtaking. I know. <laughs> Where are you from? Are you from here? Uh, I was born out here, but I grew up um, Alpine. Oh, okay. I was away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it is flat, but it is pretty. I like it out here. Yeah. It's nothing to do. I'll give you that. But it's a great place to hone <laughs> in on your craft, bro. Like In Houston, if I want to write something... I'll write, but then I'll go out, you know, and, and I'll go hang out. There's always something to do, some place you haven't been before. In Lubbock, within the first couple of weeks, after that, you're like, yeah, I've been there before. We can go back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to really look into, you know, trying something new. Not trying here. to knock Lubbock. I'm just <laughs> speaking on my experience. Did you, uh, you didn't, you, like, did you have to build a set or like anything? No, Nothing? I mean. You just used every, like, that was there? Yeah. So the house we shot at, Jared and Carrie's house is actually in reconstruction because they had a fire a couple years ago. Damn. Yeah. Um, so that being said, a lot, like some of the walls hadn't been painted. There were a lot of spots in the house where they told us like, hey, you know, like, since this is like this, feel free to like move furniture or whatever. They're still working on it. They're really gracious, nice people. I mean, there's so many things about this project I could get into about people being amazing people, but um so we would just decorate the place um move furniture around put stuff on the walls and since it's a period piece it takes place in 1870 as of now i might change that in the script for different reasons but um yeah you can't have like light switches in a movie like that you can't have i didn't even think about that. outlets in a movie like that the doorknobs should probably look a certain way like there's a lot that goes into doing a period piece and that was one of the biggest challenges that I was posing myself was like, can you do this though? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you that. What are some of the things, that, the most difficult things you, you faced this week, um, this past week? Man, honestly, that's a good question. Well, okay. I'll start by saying this. So like when you go to film school, they tell you, here are the four rules for making a successful short film, right? Don't work with kids. Don't work with animals. Don't shoot it. Don't don't shoot at night and don't write weather into your script, meaning like don't be like. And then the, it started raining and the rain was like this, you know. So I am I'm I was like 27 or 28 at the time when I started writing this and I'd been shooting like short films for a while. And I was like, man, at some point I got to decide whether I'm going to do this like just for now or for like a career. So at some point I got to break that those rules because you go to the movies you're going to see kids you're going to see animals like you know so i i did all four of those things which were very challenging <laughs> um but you had kids in that one there, kid. there's one kid there's a kid in it he did really cool he, he did really good his name's Traden. It, it was like a very brief scene um but finding locations and getting everything coordinated on time as far as production goes was the biggest challenge no doubt no doubt because i bro we had five days to shoot, right? Monday, like Monday and Tuesday. I didn't know where we were going to shoot Wednesday, Thursday, straight up. And I was, I didn't tell anybody that. So like, Will is hearing that for the first time right now. I was like shooting, like we're getting shots and stuff. In the back of my head, I'm like waiting for phone calls for people to say, Hey, yeah, you can shoot here. And stuff oh, like shit. that. Yeah. So we, we ended up like having to cut the script down, like a whole lot of stuff on the fly. Very stressful. But I mean, it was just, I was just putting one foot in front of the other and just not letting it get to me. Cause I was like, I may not know where I'm shooting tomorrow, but today I have these people that flew in from North Carolina. I have people from Damn, parts bro. of Texas. I was talking to a few yeah. to where they were from, but I yeah. didn't know North Carolina. So I'm like, we have all Damn. this. I'm never going to be able to have this again. So I'm just going to focus on what I have now and make those phone calls later. And just, I, but it was very stressful. Tuesday, I was, I was pretty scared. <laughs> oh, I was pretty scared. <laughs> yeah. Where'd you get the horses at? Um, so a buddy of mine knew I was making this film and he put me in contact with a buddy of his who the horses were his and the horses were very well behaved, um, but they yeah, did they start getting cool. antsy. Yeah. I mean, a little bit towards the end. Did you get to ride them? No, I didn't either. But they were very beautiful. Yeah, they were. I was like, yeah, you were there. I yeah. want to ride a horse and I never rode a horse. By the way, my sister, Miriam, 
is like a super woman, dude. Like she, she helped with everything so much. I mean, Will can attest to this. Like she was kind of like the production manager for um, the past five days. And honestly, the, the months leading up to this, because like I mentioned, I'm in Florida. These, you know, these guys are here in Lubbock. There's people in different parts of Texas. And she's in Georgia. She's in Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> so we're doing yeah. Zoom chats for like rehearsals and meetings and everything. And she would coordinate all that. Yeah, she, she was, was there every step along the way. The bro, entire time. She's amazing. She so I have to just into, into thank the, you. Like, doing, <laughs> yeah, shout out to her. Uh, is she into doing films and all that? Is that what she's trying to or she was just No, helping? man. She's just an amazing sister. Oh, <laughs> like fuck, she, she, she works yeah. in um, education. Oh, okay. So she's a, she's a teacher at a school in Georgia called The Bridge where they um it's it's mainly just for kids with different um conditions that you know it's it's a better environment for them as far as like mental health and everything like that. Um but she's amazing. Uh but yeah, she was out there riding the horse having a great time. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. Yeah. What was your experience like, man? You 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 were one of the guys. Are you an actor? What do you do, man? Nope. This nope. is the first time I've ever done <laughs> anything like this. Oh shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he did an amazing, amazing job. Yeah, I saw you do one scene. That was cool. Yeah. It was it was a little weird, but you know, have fun. I played a lot of Red Dead before. Uh, <laughs> get, try to get me in the mood, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, how'd you how'd you hear about it? Somebody. Um. So I don't know. I've known Carlos for like a year through uh, Miles. You know him. Ah, uh, no, I don't know. Delgado, yeah. he's on the Raider Radio. Can you look up that that group chat? On, oh, that's not on that Instagram. Never mind. Never mind. No, yeah. So you knew you you met him through there. Yeah, and he asked me to do like a trailer for like a project he was doing. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And then like a year later, he hits me up and he's like, hey, so uh, we'll make it turn it into a short film. Do you want to help? And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And then he mails out the scripts and he's like, okay, you're gonna play Mitch, same guy you played last time. And I was like, all right. Sounds good. What was it uh, like, man? You, you, you can be there? honest, well, it's, it's, it's all yeah, over, it's over now. now. So. It was hectic as shit. Yeah, bro, it but, was. Like, it were really you there was. every day? Yeah, 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 I was there every day. Um, it was a lot of fun. Met, met some pretty cool people. Um, shout out um, Dan, Aaron, Eric, yeah. Robert, Big Rob, um, Ryan, people. anyone else I might have missed, Kyla. Yeah. Aaliyah um, was in Aaliyah, there. Aaliyah, of course. Young Cry Baby. Shout out. Um, yeah. Shout out all them. They're awesome. But it was a pretty fun experience kind of bringing his, you know, Western vision to life. But yeah. Holy shit. So that was your first time? Yeah, ever. Ever. Yeah, ever. Dude. That's cool. I hope yeah. I wasn't too too difficult to work with. No, 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 no. You were yeah. good. You were good. Okay, cool. Sweet. It's kind of fun, like, you know. You know, watching the lighting get set up and everything. And yeah. I didn't really, I kind of knew how it worked, but it was cool to see it actually, you know, yeah. happening. I was just like, that was the most interesting part for me is the I, lighting. The, no, well, to see like the things that go into actually, you yeah. know, all the behind the scenes. We got to talk about Joel shit. now. Joel is, Joel yeah. is the wizard. He's the scientist. He's the man. He's, he's, cause I'm the one with all the, <laughs> all the ideas and all is he the, the. Was he the guy with the camera actually? Like, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. He is really smart. Yeah, because we the one scene I did, I did with him and that other mm -hmm. fellow. What's his name? Dim Dimitri. Demetrius. Yeah, yeah he's from guy. Austin. He's, so we, me and him did a scene. He's a game. rapper. He's actually doing a show in San Antonio soon. Oh, he's a rapper. Yeah, Childhood? yeah. And I'm I'm putting a little compilation playlist for the film. He's he's going to be on there and love that guy. So yeah. Joel, that's his name. The other guy. Joel. He's the cine he's the, the cinematographer, director okay. of photography, and borderline co-director because I mean he knows his stuff. Um, the way I met him was a few years ago in Houston, I was getting a haircut and, you know, they're just asking, so what are you into? And I'm talking about film and girl cutting my hair was like, well, uh, I, I know this guy named Joel, you know, he might help you out with your film. So at the time I had a Saturn, 2001 Saturn I was driving. The windows didn't roll down and there was no air conditioning. The power steering didn't work. Oh my goodness. And we had to drive from, I had to go pick, I was in League City, which is right by Galveston drive an hour up to go get him in Houston and drive him back down to Galveston. It was like a three hour thing. And then drive him back to his place. And this was like in July. So when I met him, it was like, hey, nice to meet you. Get in my hot box. <laughs> you guys bonded by blood, huh? Pretty much, <laughs> Damn, dude. bro. But, and and, blood, what, sweat, <laughs> and yeah. I'm expecting, I'm like, I don't know this guy. He's probably going to be complaining the whole time, which is fine. He should. Um, he <laughs> yeah. honestly should be. I'm complaining. Uh, I think... <laughs> 
complain with me, please. But, right. Um, but he was just totally just chill with it. No, no, and he's just cracking jokes, having a good time. I'm like, bro. So he ended up casting me as a lead in his film that he was doing. Um, so we we worked on that film for a couple months. But obviously everybody was living in the same city, so it was easier. Um and yeah, he was he was a great director. I could see that he really knew his stuff. And I was watching him literally thinking like, this guy's better than me at this shit. Like, I'm going to hire him for something in the future to help me out. And so that's that's what we did. Um, he's really smart. Yeah. He knows all the all the technical stuff about the cameras, the the lighting and everything. And I'm just kind of like, I just trust him. You know what I mean? So all that equipment was that his equipment? Mm, the sound equipment was mine. Oh, OK. Um, but yeah, the rest was his. Yeah, I saw him. He was in there, yeah. up on the tree, fucking on the side. Oh, get out of here, bro. He he was it was cool, man. Yeah. Who did who did that for you? Like, were you that guy? Like the cinematography type shit or whatever the fuck? Uh, pretty much. Um, the usually like the day before we film, uh, I would get Riley to come and oh, be man. like, "Hey, look. So this is what's gonna look." I, I did examples on my phone and then showed him, and then. That's where we went, you know, we went from there. Riley, he helped you out too. Riley, I love Riley. <laughs> um, I had met Riley in passing once or twice when I lived here, and I always liked him. Um, but this week, I got to spend time with him and get to know him. So shout out, Riley. He's he's so cool. Um, but he was doing behind-the-scenes shots, him and Jill, um, doing, like, behind-the-scenes pictures and video. And he just ended up getting so into it. He was in the film, uh, in costume. He they put a nasty ass scar on the side. Yeah, yeah. It, did. it looked so good. And he was a good actor, bro. I watched his shots last night. I was like, oh, Riley can act. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Riley. Yeah, yeah. And then we ended up using, because then it turned out that him and Joel had kind of similar types of cameras. So they were switching lenses too. To, to Oh, no shit. Yeah. There's yeah, so much about that, this project. He has that badass Lumix camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, bro, it's got the whole rig on mm -hmm. it and everything. That's what we used for for my short, and yeah, I, we did a lot of yeah, you did one. Yeah, we did a lot of you know tracking shots. So Riley the whole time was just walking. I probably his, his back was hurting by the end of the night. I want to hear about your short film. Uh, it, it's called. I did it two years ago. Now uh, we shot it. It was called "The Shadows Are Upon You." Cool. Um, uh, we did it we filmed at the peak of the pandemic so it was a very strange time yeah, uh but we got a crew together and luckily we all trust each other enough just is it uh, out it is it's on my instagram it's on my bio link in the description if you want to go watch it <laughs> i'm gonna watch it and i'm gonna get your instagram and message you and be like right. this is awesome cool i appreciate it <laughs> yeah he's working but, on a new one so yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm currently writing one that's called more of the same thing um there's a but, but literally it's called more of the same thing yeah it's called more of this yeah cool cool but going back to like shadows you know last year i did a round of film festivals all throughout here in texas i did some online ones because at the time that's what they i'm were definitely doing. gonna hit you up and be like so which ones are good like where should i <laughs> you go? should do which one was the one here what's uh the, flatland the, film fest you should do that one so we can watch it the one festival my is that i know i really am trying to get into a south by i always wanted to yeah, go there it's like the big one <laughs> yeah we'll see what happens i've submitted before they always reject me but one of these days whether it's hey you gotta film, keep trying man I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep trying i'm gonna keep trying hey when you do remember us all right but shout us out i'm gonna be right here talking <laughs> <about that>. hell yeah <laughs> yeah there's some there's some good ones out there um i did like in the austin area i did a lot of the smaller you know punk rock type you know yeah. film festivals those are fun too uh anytime you get to see your film on the big screen mm -hmm. that's so what are, what do you where do you plan on releasing this one like on youtube or something uh yeah i gotta i gotta well first of all i've been so focused on getting it made you know, that yeah. now that i'm kind of over that i'm like okay i don't have a plan i just you know but <clears throat> south by is one youtube i'm gonna see what what, what can happen with it because yeah. you never know if somebody's like hey mm -hmm. we're Let's strike a deal. You just can't put it on YouTube. That's what I've heard. Because when he did the festivals, you can't put it on YouTube. Man. So yeah. I'm just kind of going yeah. into it, just kind of seeing what what comes up. But that being said, like I want people to see it, so I'll probably put it on YouTube or Vimeo, whatever it is that filmmakers. The two that I will look into is the Lone Star Film Festival, which is in Fort Worth. That's a good one. Oh, and is then that, the um, do and they then the, show the films in Sundance Square. I guess, yeah. That's another theater I've always wanted to show. Where is that at? Uh, Fort Worth. Oh, okay. I and, saw the prestige there. And there's another uh, good one. Uh, that one's hard to get into, but if you can, you know, it's worth it. It's called the Oak Cliff Film Fest. It's in 
Dallas and they show it at the Texas theater. Okay. And a uh, cool thing about that is that's the theater where they arrested uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. After wow. Shot. Yeah. Wow. They're still operational. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't is know the, that. Is the box still open? Uh, yeah, the here, we were there just you. not too long ago checking it out. It was, it was my first time ever seeing that. Yeah, I went when I was a kid living uh, there. It's kind of creepy. It is. The, did you go to the museum, the exhibit? No, we were just there, and Dude. I was talking to people. I don't even want to get into it, but okay. definitely more than one person shot him after being in that area. Yeah, you can tell. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, this is Lincoln. Kennedy. 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 Oh, Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah, he definitely got shot Bullets by were flying three or day. four people. Yeah, this is the theater where. I like a good theater like that. Those yeah. are pretty cool. And it's pretty cool because uh, it was a theater that was part of a chain that Howard Hughes owned back in the day. I was just watching The Aviator the other day. Yeah. Love so, that movie. Yeah. So it's one of those. And uh, it's I got still... to feeling like him a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the blueprints. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, a, it's a nice uh, old school theater. They do concerts there, too. Uh, a lot of big premieres will, will happen there, too, as well. Cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Because I, I, we're doing the uh, premiere at National Cafe, um, which is owned by John Blackwell. Uh, it's downtown Lubbock. Um, anyways, uh, but it's going to be projected on a screen. It's probably mostly just for the cast. It doesn't really fit, you know, like a full theater. Mm -hmm. So I'm, if anything, we're going to try to rent a theater out. Cause it's not that expensive. I didn't know that. It's affordable. Yeah. Uh, to like, yeah, like anybody can do it. One of my other friends did that. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. That's cool. So. I, I definitely set out when I wrote this. I was like, we got to watch this on the big screen. So do you have like, I know you're, you just said you were super focused on film and do you have an idea when this will be done? I'm Don't telling you? everybody Christmas. Oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just allotting myself that amount of time to like be perfectionist about it. Take a couple of weeks off if I want to just cause you know, I got a day job and everything got life to worry about. Selling and this film insurance? has been, is that what you do? You said no, I'm trying to sell insurance. Oh. I'm going to be certified soon. Oh, okay. I work in customer service with, with a oh, life okay. insurance company, health insurance. Really boring. Yeah. So we don't got to get into it. So, uh, <laughs> so post filming, what all like, I don't, you know, we don't have to get into like the details of it, but I'm are down. you involved in all of the whole process? Yeah. Is it done on like your computer or some shit? I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. I'm just curious. Yeah. I mean, up until now, I've always edited my own films. So I'll probably just be editing it. I know I have a guy in Florida that I met at my parents' church. He's he's going to help me with the editing. So he might be there, like, just kind of for me to bounce ideas off of and stuff. But it's going to be me up and, you know, it's going to be me up at three in the morning, like, on the computer, like, editing the stuff. And I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be like opening a Christmas package, like, just seeing everything come together and be like, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm geeked. So, like, on something like this, because it's like a you know it's it's a smaller production mm -hmm. is everything you filmed pretty much going to be used or is it, do you think there'll be something like nah i don't um, think i should add that well we shot like every scene every take you have a lot of takes so we're not you know but as far as what all we shot yeah because the script i had was for 20 it was 20 page script we ended up shooting like a 12 to 15 page version of that script so we cut out some scenes and everything um, but everything we shot, all the scenes that we kept will be in the movie because if a single one of them isn't in it, it's going to be, it won't make sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. What is that? This is a trailer right there or something? Yeah. This is the original one. Oh like yeah. The, that was for the, uh, 58 weeks ago for the Kickstarter. Oh shit. <laughs> That's just kind of how it's... this is how you got started. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was the first one. That's when I had hair. <laughs> Come on, hon, do that. Do that middle one on the top. You got me an action shot. Look at me go. Wait, you'll know me when you see me. Of course. That's J Money. Of course, you Jay Money. The Wi Fi wants to fuck Jordan up McCullough. right now. What's up? Of course, the Wi Fi wants to be Actually, shitty right now. Oh, okay. okay. That's Jordan? Yep. yep. What a shark. <laughs> yeah. Hello, that guy. Okay. There he is. Oh, and that's, that's the raw footage. <laughs> <laughs> that was you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was something. This is like Boom. something similar to what I, you, they had me doing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but okay. in the actual Kickstarter video, I added right. like effects to where like the muzzle gotcha. flash and everything. So just to show you like kind of like. So that is something you do have to do because obviously like the fucking guns weren't. <laughs> Those were real guns, though, right? Like no, they were replicas. Oh, I thought that was like a but they were exact gun. replicas. Cause those are badass guns. They were not cheap. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, but yeah. like those guns, I bought at the dollar store like yeah. a couple days before you we shot that. You handed me one of those, like 
They were because they were they were trying to give you that Dollar Tree. They, well, you handed me that one. Oh no, your sister did. Right. So you, they were explaining the gun safety to me, and I'm like, "What the fuck are y'all talking about? This yeah. is a plastic." Yeah, and gun. I was like, "Why did I you with that? Let me get you a good gun." <laughs> what did we end up giving you? That dude who had the guns, he gave me a good one. It was a revolver. Yeah, because we had to like. Click, yeah, yeah, it was cool, everything. man. Yeah. That was fun. Can't wait for you. How did you meet that that guy? Like, who was that guy? The one with the, one with the guns. There were two guys with guns. One with one was Aaron. He had a long white beard, and then Dan. Uh, they look Western as fuck. Speaking of yeah, which, those, yeah, those dudes were cowboys. <laughs> yeah, man, I met them on backstage because they were, um, they were like, you know, they wanted to be in the film as as actors. And as I got to talking to them, they're like, so what kind of stuff do you need? You know, well, we're gonna need guns. We're gonna need this. And they're like, well, I have that. And I'm like, word. <laughs> <laughs> man, the holsters, they're the real deal, man. They had a lot of stuff. I mean, I was already buying, like, I bought Will's gun. I bought Miles's gun. Miles uses two guns in the film, so I've got both of those. But already, we were going through the budget because those guns aren't cheap. But at the same time, I didn't want dollar store guns. So I got really lucky with those guys because they had a lot of money's worth of guns. I was too. talking to, what was his name, Eric? Yeah, yeah. He was telling me that one of them was, a, they, they were both extras in 1883. Yeah, and yeah. they're like in the fucking show. That was another jackpot I hit. I I hit one of them up. I think it was Aaron, and he was like, "Okay, well, I have all these guns. Oh, and by the way, I know two, three other guys that have guns that might want to be in this too." And I'm like, "I just hit the jackpot." Like, oh, and you know, have you heard of the show The Chosen? Mm-mm, but, can it's you lift that up, please? Yeah, it's it's a Christian uh, show. It's like they're filming like the gospel, like Jesus's life. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Um, so Dan was an extra on the chosen and then another featured actor in my film named Robert, he was only here on Monday. He he was also a featured actor in, in that they're filming this in, uh, I think New Mexico and in Dallas and both the area. Uh, my mom and my sister are going to be extras on that show next week. Yeah. Dude, that's cool. Everybody's all, you know, hyped up on the film thing these days. It's kind of cool. Have you seen a uh, hell or high water? Hell Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, a good so good. Is that uh, like a classic Western? Yeah, that, Michelle's, Michelle's favorite Western movie. I don't mind. I don't know. I probably there will be blood. I don't know. That's a good. That's one. Um, so that's solid, like dude. The, what's yours, Will? <laughs> I mean, it's up there. Either No Country for Old Men or Django. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I just don't know which one. Okay, so for me, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say there's the best one, and then there's my favorite. Uh, okay, just so I can, the best one? So I can cheat two into it. Uh, Once Upon a Time in the West by Sergio Leone. Okay, and then my favorite one is The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, um, which is also by him. Ooh, yeah. I, what, what is this? Um, that's okay. This was. The, this, did they film this one in post? They it's they they mention Lubbock. They say a lot of West Texas towns, but it's filmed in Eastern New Mexico. So it's probably way cheaper. Yeah, it's way. Uh, they they filmed in Portales, uh, basically. But it Texas anyway. But hell, that lo- yeah, it all looks the same. That area was all Texas at one time, anyways. Yeah, what's that guy's name? Uh, Jeff Bridges, uh, Chris Pine's in it. Chris Pine, and that's then, what I was thinking uh, of. Ben Foster it was uh, Captain Kirk, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah oh yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you think of those Star Trek movies? I like the first one. I don't think I ever caught the second one. Yeah. First one was fun. I'm not like a Star Trek guy. I'm more of a yeah, Star I'm not, Wars. I'm not much of a Star Trek guy. Star I like those Wars. movies, but I don't have anything to compare them to. <laughs> I <laughs> never watched. Star I saw Trek. the Wrath of Khan at Alamo Draft House. We did a, a pancake that? screening. If you know about <laughs> Damn, that. that's, that's cool. awesome. <laughs> well, I, there's a lot of cool shit under Alamo that I never heard they about. Do man, so what the much, fuck? Man. This guy and my girlfriend both be doing that shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know about the pancake screening? I didn't know about the pancakes. So screening. what they do is, it's so, it's really funny. They serve you pancakes, and then they have comedians upstate, like on the like right below the screen, talking to mics, just roasting the film the whole time. Dude, that'd be fun. It's it's awesome. So we watch The Wrath of Khan, and they're just cracking jokes the whole time. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if we do that here. I've heard like cereal parties or some bullshit. Like well, that's the things. kind of thing they would do at the Ritz, which is why I'm like sad that it's gone now. They do a lot yeah, of brunches. Yeah, Rogan's here. got that yeah. place. Oh yeah, they do the brunches mm-hmm. and all hey, that. Hey, we we like Rogan too. I'm Hell like, yeah, so. I'm excited <laughs> for that. I might move to Austin when that happens. Shit, fuck it. Have a good time. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, but and bro, when it comes, Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes Sounds to perfect. to westerns, I grew up with a lot of old school westerns with my dad and grandpa. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big John Wayne fan. Okay, so cool. I, I like 
films like the cowboys and the searchers like stuff like that. i love the searchers i don't know the cowboys cowboys is a good Just one the apparently they're remaking it tommy lee jones is going to be uh john that Wayne's man is still alive <laughs> <laughs> i love tommy lee jones he's awesome Bro, he's, he's kind of just—he's like a cowboy Robert De Niro. Wow, that was on point. <laughs> yeah. Well, my dad really loves westerns too. I think that's part of probably why I set out to make a western was to be like, let me make something the old man like. Uh, but what, he watches like you, Revolver, like, Gunsmoke, those kind of shows. What are your influences when it comes to film, like westerns? Um, or what? I have weird influences. Um, well. Because I like music a lot. I actually keep up with music way more than film. Okay. Um, so, like, as far as, like, artistry goes and stuff, it's weird. Like, I'll be looking at um, stuff Kanye does. and let that, that man's a true artist right there. <laughs> that boy, I, I love mean, him. What, what shout yeah. out? He uses an artist <laughs> in I don't know icon. what to say there, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just saying, that, I love that motherfucker. When he's unhinged, yeah. I really do. I like it. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, it's the stuff he was doing so with the... Uh, the sound, not the sound, the listening parties for Donda. I'm yeah. like, this is cinema, bro. This is like so cool. Anyway, so stuff like that. I'll be watching music videos and stuff. But my favorite directors, the ones that get me going a lot, um, are like obviously Tarantino, Nolan, Christopher Nolan, Martin Scorsese, Sergio Leone. Um, R.P. Ray Liotta. Oh, R.P. Ray Liotta. I forgot about that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> since i can remember i wanted to be a gangster yeah, right Man. I, what's what's crazy is that can he, i get one of those cigarettes yeah because cool. yeah, he died but two weeks two weeks ago i was talking about him i was talking about uh my brother's been playing uh grand theft auto vice city mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. and ray liotta is the voice of tommy versetti the, the main character oh for game. real yeah i didn't know that has, has it, he always been yeah mm -hmm. i'm and gonna we, that now <laughs> we, we saw this uh, old interview that he did and the reporter asked him about grand theft auto and he looked surprised and he was like uh yeah that's something i try to forget about uh -huh, <laughs> why but but he killed it <laughs> but he, but i don't think he had realized the impact that he had doing mm. that no, but you all know. of his like posh movie friends would make fun of him for it. Yeah, because like you, I mean, for at that time, if an actor was doing that, game. that thing is classic. But yeah. now, but, but not to them. They're you know in their seventies. Eh, it doesn't matter what they think. It's classic. No, it's, yeah. <laughs> but like yeah. no, now, that is kind of sad that he didn't realize. Yeah, because well, because uh, I was talking to my brother about it. I was like, <laughs> man, if I ever had the chance to interview him, I think that's something I would bring up and let him know. Like, hey, like you know, y you probably think it wasn't all that great but yeah. a lot of people that played that game that's like, kind of like how the star wars prequels are now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly um, everyone loves hating christian now <laughs> hey he's back though sure. i haven't seen the new obi-wan series but he's i'm back. looking forward to it those yeah. star wars prequels okay i have this do you like them for nostalgic reasons okay yes, yeah i think objectively they're not very good i hear you i hear you mm -hmm. i enjoyed them man they were a big part of like what got me into i didn't movies. like the three the last three Whatever the oh, words. those are no, they're just cheap money grabs. <laughs> I didn't like them at I all. I did not. The, the Force never, Awakens never, was watchable. Never, it was good. It was I, the other two were just like yeah. okay, <laughs> they were entertaining, but I could never get invested in the story. It just felt like a cheap knockoff of what yeah. had already happened. And it's crazy because before I'm excited to see Obi Wan, and at the same time I'm like, when are they gonna stop? Like it's too much. No, man, this is awesome. It's cool. You okay? I respect that, but to me it's just like it kind of belittles like the original three or like the original six. That's just me, you know. I, I mean, Star Wars fans they get precious about their well, stuff, so that's job me. Bridging the gap with it, right and now. I love Mandalorian. Oh, I haven't I seen Book of Boba too. Fett. I yet. liked it too. Liked it too. Uh, see, yeah. I'll probably love it too, and then go back to complaining. That's how I am with the Spider Man movies. I'm like, they got to stop this at some point, and Ke then I'll watch them and like them. Uh, Kevin Smith had best explained it, talking about how in the 80s and 90s like what star wars was at that time like that was like the holy trinity like you're not supposed to touch that like at all right and uh you know and then, then disney boom, here comes the i mean the prequels i guess were you know george lucas did them and they were, and i like that you don't see that anymore no nah, like it, with all the streaming services and everything like movies aren't as special as they used to be mm -hmm. it's all like, about tv shows it's about tv I, shows i don't know man i like a lot of you i prefer i kind of like these these, these like I, I you know it. game of thrones type shows game of thrones I, is good. I, I like that shit it's good man yeah i don't know that's just coming like, from but, me. but there's always been good tv yeah like, i guess you, i mean it's, movies just aren't as special anymore because you don't really have to go out because i just know i don't want to work know. on tv shows so for me i'm like when i get to making movies i hope people treat them like 
And I don't want to do sequels and stuff. I just want to write. Oh, you have like, no interest in TV shows? Is that what you said? I'm not going to say no interest. Like, but, if somebody says, like, hey, well, Carlos, you can make a Left 4 Dead show. I'll be like, yeah, I'm ready. You don't think that'd be cool? I think it would be amazing. Yeah. But I would rather it just be, like, a really amazing two and a half hour movie. Just do it with, like, boom, no sequels, it's no nothing. Fucking six episodes with two and a half hours long. You know, a fucking movie each episode. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you know what I would, the ideal thing is when you go on Netflix and watch The Hateful Eight, they have an option where you can watch it as, like, one sitting or as six different episodes. And I think that would be really cool to do. That is cool. Yeah, because it's a long movie. But at the same time, it's broken up into chapters. And I like that kind of stuff. Speaking of uh, Tarantino, have y'all ever checked out Jackie Brown? Love that movie. I haven't seen Jackie Brown. I I honestly... Can you look that up? I want to know what the actress name in that is. That's... um, Is that who that is? mm -hmm. Okay. Pam Greer. Yeah, Yeah. you said it. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Oh, Hello, Pam Grier. Yeah, I feel like as I get older, this is more and more becoming my favorite Tarantino film. Really? Yeah. Wow. So you're kind of like an oddball there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just really like the, you know, because I love Pam Grier. Uh, Samuel Jackson's a good villain in the film. Michael Keane's pretty badass in this Is this, this the one, one where De Niro shoots the girl in the parking lot? Yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah. I was just about to say that part and where uh, Chris Tucker gets killed. Those are the guys. Thanks, none. Oh yeah, spoiler alert. But yeah, (laughs) I I will say uh, the the character Max Cherry is one of my favorite characters. He is a good character. Yeah, it's always one of those for me. It's one that's like I always forget about it. Like I forgot Michael Keaton was in it Mm -hmm. until you mentioned it. I'm like, oh, he was. Yeah, he he did so good. One of the uh, detectives. Yeah, so it's a great movie. I was trying to get Roy to go out there, but. When? Remember I invited you yeah, and Jay? Yeah, I was busy that day. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for the invite, though. Appreciate it. Was That that was uh, like last week on Tuesday, wasn't it? It was like two weeks ago. Yeah. I also yeah. wanted to mention, you asked me my favorite directors, and I, I forgot uh, Peter Jackson did yeah. The Lord of the Rings. So. Big influence on me. Peter Jackson's a G. He is. Look go to, that, go to his, go to like all so we can just see what else he's done, please. Yeah, I think he's, he's probably a genius, you know? Lovely bones. Did he do a full sweep? With There's a mouse the right King there, by the way. At the Oscars. Yeah, he 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 got uh, him that movie, the Titanic, and I think it's Casablanca or Gone with the Wind, one of those two. He did King uh, Kong. I didn't. Know yeah, that. yeah. I say he's my favorite director, and I haven't even seen Lovely Bones, but I'm just I like uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Don't like the Hobbit movies. I'll watch them. I'll watch them if they're on or something. I don't have any, if it's, I'm in a Lord a of the Rings, it's, it's a fun watch. If, I, if I'm in a Lord of the Rings mood, but that's all that I'm being presented with, mm-hmm. are you maybe? Are you excited about the show that they're doing? I'm Not like, at all. Meh. I'm, I'm, I've heard that it's really it's bad. Really good. They've already like. Yeah. It's like going back to what I said about Star Wars. It's just like just leave it alone. Like I'd rather see more original stories than more sequels. Oh, okay. That's what I want. They're doing a Wheel of Time show, but I never heard much about it after it came out. A friend of mine is a big fan of this like fantasy series called Wheel of Time. I haven't read it personally, but he always talked about how they're making an Amazon show about it. But Hmm. he would talk. Yeah, yeah, it's a book. He showed me it before. It's long as shit, and there's so many of them. I need to get back to reading books. No, it's already out. First season. Mm Mm-hmm. But I never watched it. Did y'all like The Witcher? Never watched. No, it. Yeah, I, I thought it was kind of cheesy. Is that with, uh, what's it his was, name? but it was it was enjoyable because of is that. Is that with Superman? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, Henry Cavill. Okay, yeah, that dude. Because sometimes you do want to just watch something that's like mindless entertainment. Hell no. That's how I feel <laughs> about no, the. No, no, <laughs> no, bro. The game is fuck. It, it's brutal. You know, what, it's which grimy. One? The Witcher games. I wanted the show to kind of be like that. Oh, see, oh, I, I didn't play the games or read the books. Sorry. What? The yeah, I, didn't I was. I was writing. I didn't know it was a game. Sorry. Oh, dude, it's so much fun. No. Oh, Atlanta this is, is so the good. show to watch. Atlanta is so yes. Okay, good. and then other favorite directors: this guy and Jordan Peele. They've. I'm excited for that alien mo- movie. Uh, okay. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for that. It is aliens, right? That's what I've heard. That's what. Know. That's what they're making it look like. Did you watch the last season of this? Season yes, three. Yes, I did. What'd you think of it? Have y'all seen the season I three? I finished it. Not gonna lie, I've never okay. seen this. So what episode are you on? Um, I think the last one I had watched is the guy from The Hangover is being sued for um, his yeah. um, ancestors being slave owners. Bradley Cooper? Not Bradley oh, Cooper. Oh, no. The guy from National Treasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not oh, Nicholas. Yeah. 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 He's in it. So, so episode, what's your take yeah. on the season so far? Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, 
that party episode in that mega mansion in London, bro. That was they got so... a Nando's. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Have y'all seen a what is it called? The Wire. No, I've heard. I've, it's good, I've seen episodes here and there, I but I haven't watch watched one. it all. Everyone makes it sound like died. it's the greatest show. Well, when that time. guy yeah. when that guy yeah. died, they were saying that it's a badass show. No. Maybe I should check it out. True Detective, anybody? Fuck yeah! Oh like yeah, season, uh, one. Season, season one, season two is not as good. It's not I bad. Like season two, it's not as good though. It's not nearly as good. Season three, I've heard, is really good though. I've never I've watched that. Watched What's it. that one about? Um, the Bohemian Grove or something? I don't. Know. I have no idea. The third one, Matthew McConaughey, man, killed that. That's when he became one of my favorites. That's a bad it. yes. Yeah. Uh, do y'all like the Do y'all like the Sopranos? You ever seen that one? Yeah, I, I, I haven't show. finished it, but yeah, I've seen I've seen part of it. It's, I don't think I finished it, but I watched it's just a good couple. So seasons. it's so much New Jersey. It's kind of it. hard to handle, like in, for long stretches. That's why I like it. What, one thing it's I do awesome. like about you know the Sopranos, especially with Atlanta too, I love when uh, there's a lot of surrealism and yeah. Dada Dadaism, like just stuff that just doesn't necessarily make sense, and you kind of just have to take it for what it is how just like how like when he's dreaming and shit well yeah i guess yeah dream sequences and things that are just not necessarily realistic but you know what's another show i haven't watched is uh twin peaks you, you know everyone likes to compare atlanta with twin peaks too uh, but yeah, i've never yeah. seen twin peaks though i saw the pilot episode and i've seen like images and Can i've heard the music up? i don't even know what, what it twin is. peaks yeah. david lynch you ever watch like that. eraserhead blue velvet Mulholland drive yeah i have well, y'all gotta watch those movies. <laughs> <laughs> the bar. Oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> you ever go there? I'm sorry, where? To the bar? No, Twin I have not. Twin Peaks? Oh, wait. Yeah, Twin Peaks. <laughs> uh, Blue Velvet's one of my favorites. That movie's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. What's your favorite movie of all time? My favorite movie of all time? Ah, oh, man. Top, okay, top three. Okay. I gotta think I'll put that. Lord of the Rings on there as one. Um, man, you really got me here. <laughs> I have like I have a bunch of joke answers that I give. Like I say, Ferris Bueller Day Off. Oh, see, mine's Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura is good. That's mine. Yeah, oh, I fucking love that movie. And I'll say like Lion King, but they're not my favorite movies of all time. But they are very good movies. Um, but anyways, uh, Lord of the Rings. <sighs> I like The Godfather a lot. Um, the first two, and third. These days, it's been Once Upon a Time in the West. Yeah. Just look up. Just see what they says. Like, uh, top movies of all time. I just want to see if, like what the list would say. But, I mean, I love Pulp Fiction. I love Pulp Star Fiction's Wars. Love... What's that one? Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I like that one. That was a yeah, good movie. That, was, that, was, that one was a lot of fun. I love Anchorman. <laughs> Step <laughs> Brothers. Dude, I was, watching, Brothers. Bro, I was watching Anchorman this morning. <laughs> you were? Yeah. That movie is Odyssey. always good. Space Odyssey's number one. That's a very good... Oh, Kubrick. I forgot him. Yeah. <sighs> Can't forget him. <laughs> oh, we're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite Kubrick film, anybody? I don't know. Oh, heard. dude, um, what's that one in black and white about them dropping the uh, Doctor Strange Love? Yeah, yeah. Is it dude, Clockwork Doc Orange. Mm -hmm. Is that him? Yeah. That's my yeah. favorite. Doctor like Strange Love is hilarious. You haven't, he hasn't seen Clockwork Orange. I have not seen That's Clockwork Orange. I was trying to talk to him on set about it. I was like, so this is kind of like. Yeah, a they're trying Orange. to tell. They're trying to tell me how to get it into like character, and they listed off like four different movies. I was like, no, <laughs> no. Anyways. Nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry. That's not always the best way. I need to watch this one. anyway. I have heard a lot about this one. I saw this at oh, the yeah. Texas Theater. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, classic. It, it kind of, I mean, it, it's outdated, but at the same time, it's very relatable now because it has to deal with a lot with the the media, with the newspapers at the time, and politicians. That's one of those timeless ones. Yeah, really. and yeah, he made this when he was twenty five. Mm -hmm. Damn. So yeah. What is that? I don't know shit? what that is. Sorry, no disrespect to the French. A, yeah. You guys seen eight? Oh, oh bro, let's yeah. go. Oh god, I love that movie. That, that is, is yes. Uh, peak cinema. <laughs> peak yeah, yeah. cinema. Yeah. Um, oh, eight and a half by Frederick Fellini. Have you seen that? Yeah, I know. Is it this one like? Oh, isn't this oh, I heard. I've heard this based, is fantastic. Based everything Akira on the Kurosawa. Magnificent Seven. They based it off of. They based like all westerns off of this one. Is mm -hmm. what I've heard, yeah. man. That's yeah, another favorite much. director right there for sure. Uh, another French film, The Four Hundred Blows. I've seen that. That's Very a good, good one. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Westerns are just American kung fu movies. Right. Yeah, it's the same tale. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I see we, this on like Instagram. I see clips of this movie all the time. Hmm. But I've never seen it. I want to continue. Speaking like, of watched westerns, it. there we go. There we go. 
Let's go, Texas. Dude, that is such a badass movie. Top 10. Yeah, man. And that scene is so... Because you always remember about the fire and everything. I watched it the other day, and I forgot that what's happening is the kid loses his ear, his hearing yeah. in that hey. scene. It's like emotional. He gives him like that whiskey too. You're like, oh fuck. They're doing a crazy. Man. Spoiler alert. They're, they're, that ending scene where his dad's like, I don't love you. You're not my yeah. son. And bro, and he has the guy having to fucking translate it. Oh my gosh. The bowling alley scene's pretty I guess cool the guy's too. translating what his son's saying. Speaking of which, the Batman's a good movie. I love that movie. I don't good care fellas, who says what. Goodfellas <laughs> is top three all time. Yeah. Well, what are your uh, top three favorite movies? Okay. Glorious Bastards. He's ready. Goodfellas oh, and movie. Grand Budapest Hotel. He's yeah, ready. I love that movie too. <laughs> yeah. Great movies. Honorable mention Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, did you see the new Wes Anderson? The. Uh, no. No. Okay. I want I, to. I though. forgot the name of it. It's the one with the crazy cast. Yeah. 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 Everybody cast working in movies stacked. right now. Isn't, isn't he from. He went to Texas. Right? He did go yeah, to yeah, Texas. He's, he's from, roommates he, with. He's from Houston. Who? West He's from Houston. Yeah. And he went to Texas. Yeah. Shout out to Texas. Yeah. But he was an English major. No, he did, he shout out to the people from Texas, not the school. <laughs> I was about to say. Not the school. Like, and I even went like that. Fuck. I, I was going to say shout out UT, but I was like, wait a second. Yeah. What is this? Mahalan Drive, David Lynch. Erotic lesbian sex scene. That's nice. What I, said. I don't know if I've seen that one. I think my dog got in the trash. <laughs> that's one of my that's my favorite movie of all okay. time dark, dark knight, knight top 15 top three makes yeah. sense dark knight blade the, runner uh, 20, 2049 uh, okay i have a weird stance on batman most of the batman movies i've seen all incredible but it's kind of weird that he has a cape well, i get there's some utility yeah I, mean, I get there's utility well, to it but it's buildings. just like there's some i disagree a hundred percent there's sometimes <laughs> i'm watching it and he's running around with his cape and it's just like his has actual utility though because y'all don't, everybody else utility, y'all don't get really. this but, but everything, oh shit everything, <laughs> everything he does with his cape he could essentially do with a wingsuit yeah you know yeah because he's I mean, the thing <laughs> like batman's main superpower isn't money it's theatricality <laughs> <laughs> so is, is okay. christian bell your favorite batman yeah 100 cool. percent. ben okay. affleck has my favorite batman line though um they ask him what his superpower is and he's like i'm rich yeah no that is i didn't like ben affleck as batman but he has my favorite line if you ask me though batman should look like ben affleck like that's a he when he got jacked like that that's a big dude you read uh dark knight returns like like an alcoholic Uh, the the comic book yeah 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 yeah. okay frank miller huge influence on me as far as like i'm I'm gonna keep answering that question for the rest of the podcast (laughs) (laughs) yeah just as they come to your head just fucking let them rip charlie chaplin the rizzo (laughs) chaplin so damien chazelle who did uh whiplash which is my top three Mm. uh he also is that what miles teller yeah yeah and and jk simmons and then uh he, he did uh La La Land and First Man uh, about uh, Neil Armstrong. But his next film, apparently, I think Tobey Maguire is starring in it. And he plays Charlie Chaplin. Oh. And I think it has to do with the making of The Great Dictator. Okay. Where he, where he, it's like a parody of Hitler. Yeah. Did y'all like The Great Gatsby? Yes. Yeah. I thought it was good. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the soundtrack. I don't think it fits, but really? I like how surreal it is. Yeah. I enjoy it. I'm, the whole thing is like a story that Nick's telling. So it's kind of cool that it seems like dreamy you yeah know what i mean yeah what's your favorite because it's his recollection of it not you know romeo and juliet another what's top favorite, favorite movie? like horror movie horror movie type. uh texas chainsaw massacre oh, yeah. the original yeah that one's solid have you seen oh uh, it's an it's a it's a korean movie god damn it what is Parasite? it called? no nah, it's another one uh old boy is it called house no it's like the this demon is plaguing this fucking village it's fucking crazy i don't think i've seen the it. wailing you should watch that movie. The Whaling, I watch the it. Whaling, dude. It's yeah. fucking... Is it like old, black and white? Or, no, no, it's no like more recent. Recent. I, can you look that up? You well, seen so. Old Boy? Yes. Oh my god. The original. I don't. I don't know which. I didn't even know there was more than. Yeah, there's. They did a remake with Josh Brolin. No, I ain't seen that. I mean, it's a good movie, yeah, but, but the original is. The Whaling. Can you look that up, please? Okay, I, I spell the Whaling. I, I want to see how you spell it first. I don't know. <laughs> the Whaling. It's uh, W A I L I N G. Yeah, there you go, right there. Yeah. I will recommend this movie to anybody. We need to just have a list. Just movies. Was it, bro, was bro, it Eric Jerry? sent me a full list of his favorite movies Eric's divided so cool. by genre. And then he put asterisks on them that would signify how much he liked it. That's a true friend. Damn. Maybe no, he, I didn't, just, no he, just, he just had that on there, like, just on his phone already. 
He asked, oh. me, he asked me if I wanted it. <laughs> Can you send that to me? I'm offended yeah. he didn't offer that to me. <laughs> the Koreans, man, the Koreans make some good films. I got to catch up on that. But when we were talking about The Great Gatsby, when you were talking about you didn't like the soundtrack, uh-huh. uh, this guy, who's the director, he also di- is directing the... The Elvis. new biopic of Elvis. Okay, that and, makes total sense. And the soundtrack is pretty out there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He did Moulin weird. Rouge and uh, Romeo and Juliet, uh-huh. and I love Romeo and Juliet. Moulin Rouge is I'll take her to leave. I was I was talking to someone the other day, and I said, "Have you seen the trailer for the new Elvis movie?" And they're like, "Yeah." It's like, doesn't it kind of look like The Great Gatsby mm-hmm. in a way? Yeah. Well, that's why. I mean, I'm not saying it's not. It's going to be a bad movie. Uh, I'm guessing Texas Tech baseball is winning. Because that's my mother screaming back there. That's so, awesome. Just if y'all can hear that. I heard uh, Tom Hanks was not very good in that movie. In what? Elvis. Elvis. No, Has it come out? No, not yet. Just like early reviews, I guess. I heard it was bad. I love Tom Hanks' son. He's but so Elvis has been divided. I've been heard a lot of yeah. bad. I've heard this and I've well, heard that. I heard no, the no, main no, guy Hanks. does really good, oh, okay. and that the film is pretty good. <laughs> he's a, he's a I'm trip. just saying, like, so I historically I've heard Elvis oh. has stolen black people's. And taking their credit. And then I heard um, he grew up with them and that he was one of them. So I don't yeah. know which one it is. Like, is he a, is he a culture vulture yeah. or is he just living his life? He, hey, either way, he's made a mark. He did. And he was the first big, to be a film. I mean, he was the first big mega, like he was like the Justin Bieber of that time. <laughs> <Super Bieber. laughs> he was the first, like just someone that truly like just took over the, a wave of hype and all that cool dude though shout out elvis he looked look pretty cool <laughs> yeah yeah i'm watching fucking bugs where are we at because these bugs are bothering we'll keep going for a little bit more so y'all seen romeo and juliet though <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. no. Now we're five. I, man it's a good one y'all should watch it it's better than titanic like okay, let's know. slow our roll here. I like Titanic better than Titanic. Yeah, man. What's it's it got? It's at Leo DiCaprio, uh-huh. and it's it came out around the same time, and it's a love story. Okay, and I like it better than Titanic. Who's the the lady in that? Um, something like Dane. Can, I, I I don't know. Who, Young Jamie Lee. What was it again? <laughs> Romeo and Juliet from the nineties. Y'all might watch this movie and hate me for making you watch it, but I like it. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, you ain't gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. Claire, Claire Danes. Danes. Yeah. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Yeah, man, it's got some people. John Leguizamo. Paul Rudd's in some like weird movies, like in his early in his career. Yeah. <laughs> he was like in Halloween Five. Yeah, that's what it was. Like, yeah. Clueless. I had never seen that one then, like maybe a year ago, sitting on my couch watching, you know, like the Halloween marathon. Yeah. And uh, I saw that that movie was coming on. I was like, okay, sick, cool. I've never seen this one. Then Paul Rudd shows up. I'm like, what in the world is going on? Yeah, dude. Yeah. He still looks the same too. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a Halloween movie. Well, you should watch the first one. Yeah. At least I the should. first one. Yep. Yep. It's sort of like Texas Chainsaw, you know, it kind of just branches off in it. Yeah, and I never saw any uh, Chainsaw sequels either. I just saw the Not first even one. the one that came out with in like 2013 or something? Nah. I saw that one. Nah. It was nasty. Yeah? I it. It, was, it, was, yeah it was gross. I mean, they were sawing people in half. All the the first one was so good because it was, it was nasty, but it was more like psychological. Well, he told me that it was based off being like a vegan. Like it was like a, he's a vegan and he was pre- portraying like... Uh, the meat industry, right? Something so, like that? yeah, it's, they changed how I saw the movie completely. Was that filmed in Texas? Yeah, it. it was filmed in that's uh, not Dallas, right? Maine, no, it was Austin. It was Austin. like Mainer, Round Rock. So, where I used to live at, I used to live in the Round Rock area, and where it has a bunch of houses now, that's mm-hmm. where the ranch was when they filmed Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, but the actual house that they're basing it off of is outside of Dallas, right? The uh, what's it called? I think it's not in its original location. Mm-hmm. I, w- I could be wrong, but I want to say it's now um, a chiropractor shop. <laughs> all right. Cool. But yeah, it, it, that was all the Austin area because Toby Hooper, did Toby Hooper go to UT? I don't know if you Is know. he the director of this? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't even know that was who directed it. I just knew I liked the movie. Yeah. Yeah, because Toby Hooper's from the uh, Austin area. He did Poltergeist as well. Shout out to my people from Texas. But I really like, as far as horror Yeah, he's movie from Austin. Goes, oh. That or, mean, I don't know. Um, as far as horror movies go, I really like the like original Frankenstein, original Dracula, original Invisible Man. I like watching. Movies They're redoing like those, I think. He was born in Austin. Doing Texas. Para, para, uh, what's it called? Universal. They're doing like they got the licensing to do that or some shit. My girlfriend would tell you, I don't know. That's did actually one of my dream projects. Did y'all hear that um, they're making a horror movie about Winnie the Pooh? 
Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, public. Yeah. It's a what do you call it now? It's public a, domain. It's yeah. public domain. So they picked it up. He just can't wear a red shirt. That's what I heard. What? That's the only, or something like what that. What if he gets blood on the shirt? There's and then it's a soaked, there's soaked a little red. like thing you can't do with it, but it's gonna be a horror. You can movie. mimic the character. Yeah, it's fucking cool. Wow. What's the name of the dude who wrote that? The original author. Brothers so, Grimm. No, uh, I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea. Never mind. Yeah, he went to the University of Texas. Boo. <laughs> And Thanks for the movies, though. And his, <laughs> yeah, his parents owned a theater in San Angelo. Oh, he just died. Yeah. Mm. Not too long ago. Yep. Y'all seen The Shining? Mm-hmm. Good I horror movie. I love that movie. Yeah. Apparently, isn't that a Cuban movie? Yeah. He didn't, Kubrick, yeah. He didn't like that. I thought he said Cuban. <laughs> Maybe, I don't Stephen know. King didn't like it. Oh, yeah. yeah Stephen who King wrote the book. Yeah. And the actress, the actress, that starred in it was like mistreated on set as far as Shelly like, Duvall and everything. Yeah, he was kind of driving her to the brink of like insanity and Man. stuff. Well, you, so that's not look cool. Look what it made. It made a good movie though. Yeah, but that's not always. <laughs> I know you tell me you're the director, dog. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm not. I don't subscribe to so that. I I'd rather treat my actors. I literally good. just saw a clip. This was making me think of this of. Um, Jamie Foxx telling Leonardo DiCaprio like about using the N word. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Look, man, this that's your property. You, you know, you get it. You, you th- these aren't humans no more. That's your property." And so he said the next day. Wow. He said the next day Leonardo came on set and he was like, "Hey, what's up, dude?" And he just ignored him. And, it, and then he made a good movie. Like I was, I was yeah. thinking that being on set, like putting no, yourself in the, I, yeah. putting yourself like as like in the western. Like but that's those different. Were mean. The, they I know they kind of like signed on for yeah. that. But with what happened with Shelly Duvall, that was like something that happened to her. So, well, you gotta think with Kru- uh, with Krubik, he was he would do mathematics on his free time, and I just think mentally he was just yeah he was out there yeah. Did he did he abuse her? Um, not not any like I don't think sexual way or anything, but he was just like having to do, do takes over and over and over again. And like just freaking her out, oh. like the OSHA the, would have been mad, huh? They would have just been like, "Hey, we're shutting down." Well, there's I was in that situation. Well, I wouldn't behind. be pleased either. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I like so. the movie though. No, it's a great <laughs> movie. Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, okay, like another one of my favorite movies is Ben Hur, um, Charlton Heston. He he was like in Ten Commandments and stuff. But movies back then, like they'd have these epic Roman epics with thousands of people in the cast and all these horses and stuff, and like people would die in real life. Like, yeah, the movie industry has come a long way as far as making sure people are taken care of. You yeah. know, was that something you were challenged? Not really challenged, but something you had like keeping everybody. Absolutely. Good? I mean, yeah, absolutely. These are my friends, you know, <laughs> like for the stunt that um, we did with Miles where he was hanging and stuff. I was really nervous. And I was like constantly asking him, like, are you OK? Are you comfortable? Like, do you need to stop? Like, I mean, they had the back harness on him, so he was never. They did. But I still, mean, I'm just looking out for him because I mean, you could still fall from that. He could be yeah. lying. He could be telling me I'm good, but he's not. You know, I mean, he would have told you if he was if he was holding yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was a good scene. That was cool, man. That was wild. Yeah, man. That was that was a great day. Stressful, but a great day. That was the most fun day for sure. Yeah. Even though we were out there it's like a. And we didn't eat or nothing. Like no. Yeah, we were out there that late. Yeah. We ate at one, and then got to set. We were shooting. You know, getting set up at two. We didn't leave till ten. No, really eleven. We were shooting till ten. Um, yeah, yeah, but then we had to like pack up all our stuff. That's yeah, I was exactly. Show y'all. He was stressing her out so much that she was losing her hair like right then and there yeah oh, pulling it out of her and head he was like, just like it's nothing yeah. exactly right, he's pulling the the hair out of her head and being like look guys look at that yeah that's like i guess you really what, didn't have is, a voice back then if you're doing that somebody needs to check <laughs> well i i have read up something that she wasn't the actress that he wanted so it was more of just like him just pushing her to what he actually like wanted on on screen mm-hmm. but good movie though <laughs> but i don't know <laughs> treat your act, act, directors out there be nice well yeah, when Jesus. uh when we did art carlos was very nice never put us through any uncomfortable conditions did he ever yell at you not once okay i'm sure you I seem did. very chill that's why i like I am you're, pretty you're like chill. bradley and i like i want to piss bradley off just to see him mad not in a nice way you know? <laughs> i'm not good i like think about like right now i'm thinking about you mad and i yeah. can't i can't think about you mad I mean, I get mad, but like, don't get it twisted. Don't don't piss me off. Try. I don't want you to piss me off. <laughs> I don't. I don't always. Okay, I'm good about not acting on it inappropriately. 
you know, and well, I kind of prioritize like what needs to be happening. Of it all. You, yeah. You're... And I'm, I'm chill. And like, I don't even really, I'm not a thousand percent comfortable in a situation with a lot, a lot of people, especially when everybody's asking me stuff. And so, yeah, it's kind of a challenge, but it's really fun. Yeah. You kind of set the tone, right? Like you, if, if you're frantic, then everybody might be. Yeah. Cause everybody's looking to you. Yeah. I mean, the number one rule of directing is like, if you don't know what you're doing, look like, you know what you're doing and don't ever break character. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, because because if you if you show that you don't know what you're doing or that you know, then people are gonna not you know not think, follow you. I think seeing uh, one mistake I do see in other sets is when a direct, let's say a director or the DP don't agree with something and they're arguing like in front of everyone. That's another reason I love Joel because he's he is very set in what he mm -hmm. wants, but it's for a reason, you know? But if there's like a disagreement, that's something you truly have you, to take. You gotta take it. If there was yeah, ever a disagreement yeah. where you were really telling him that you wanted a different shot, then he would, you know, give it to you. But exactly. Had, but, but at the same time, yeah. he knew what the good angles were. So, he And I knew to you, trust him because yeah. I'd worked with him before and exactly. some stuff. He's yeah. a cinematographer for a reason. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think the, the biggest challenge when I did uh, uh, Shadows was that it was filmed at night. The whole film was set at night. Wow. So when we filmed it, it was late July, 2020. Outdoor scenes? Uh, both. Yeah. So, but the house that we did it in, there's no central heating and air. So there was a yeah. window. We had the window units on. We kind of had those. <laughs> but it was the, it was the week. Uh, hey, but that's a real feel because you're in the Westerns, man. Because it was uh, not very yeah, comfortable. Because we <laughs> it was said during the time that two weeks where it was like 110 every single day. Oh, so man. even when it was at night, it was still like 95 degrees. What were the actors wearing? Um, here, I'll show you some. Because these guys had jackets, ponchos. Yeah, I know. Nothing like that. Hats, makeup. Luckily, had, the day I went out there, it was nice and cool. It was it actually was cold. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. That was random, dude. It, it was that first day of June. Yeah, and yeah, it's like Juniper, 65 degrees was, that ended yeah. up being one of the challenges that night was how cold everyone was yeah, i'm like cool. there's no way i could have planned for june 1st in lubbock <laughs> texas to be this weather. cold but yeah these are some shots cool but it's uh, like a break-in so the the best way i i explain it to people is <laughs> that um it's like a meditation of the it represents the struggles of being in an interracial relationship. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you just you just got to check it out and see what you think. Yeah, that's but, beautiful. But um, but yeah, we had fun with it. Um, but Shout it, out to Nina. Yeah, Nina. She cool. was our actress. Uh, yeah. What I probably would have never done the film if it wasn't for her, because sure. the character um, who she plays, she's uh, she's deaf. But Nina is actually deaf, like in real life. So I didn't want anyone to pretend or act mm -hmm. like they were deaf. I really wanted to represent that community well. Wow. And so Nina wanted to join because she had done acting since she was she, since she was young. Yeah. But she was like, this was the first time I actually got to play someone who was actually That's deaf. That's amazing. So, and there's sign language in there too. And yeah. it has subtitles as Isn't well. Isn't it awesome to provide opportunities for people that like, don't always get like mm -hmm. like those guys that I told you about that come from 1883. They just have all those guns. They're just looking for something to do sometimes. Like they, they do a lot of short films. Um, and they were like probably like 30, 40 percent of our wardrobe, too. They brought, a, they brought a lot of they brought a lot of gear. We hit the jackpot with them. There's Riley right there getting a shot from the Riley shouts boy. out. Riley. Riley. Riley boy. He's got the snap back with no brim. Yeah, the no brim cat. <laughs> I love that. It. <laughs> it's me and him right there. Yeah, it's a cool Terminator poster. By the How way. long did it take you to film it? Uh, two weeks, and it was a challenge because Nina, uh, I caught her in the nick of time because she uh, was moving back to Dallas in two weeks. Mm, yeah, so we did one week of prep, and then the or yeah, it was one week of prep, and then two weeks we filmed. Mm. So, was it a stressful shoot or pretty smooth? Or? Uh, I, I would say it went pretty smooth. Uh, the it's good, always stressful. The, the, right? the good thing about this was I. <laughs> you know, I wrote the script and I told them what I wanted, but they still pitched in on what they thought would have worked better. So it, it worked out pretty good, though. Awesome. That's what's up. Because you got to you got to have the actor do something that they feel comfortable mm -hmm. or like that they are able to do realistically. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Because we had it, some of that on us. <laughs> well, because because when you write a script, because like I said, if you, you, you know what you want, but at the same time they're taking the time of 
putting their work in mm-hmm. so they have to leave their mark as well too so and i try to ha- I, I like when the actors are feel like storytellers too mm-hmm. and really they are it's like on a stage play like that's an actor's medium so they gotta tell the story through their acting and when that when you have that in mind on set and every actor is telling a story together that's really cool to me that kind of stuff um fascinates me i guess you've done have you done some acting um yeah nothing i'm like too eager to tell people to watch <laughs> um find for the it on, fi- find it on carlos pagan on youtube <laughs> um well with joel i was a, i was the lead on his film it was like a 45 minute film we spent a few months shooting that i was i started in my film that i did in high school like i shot wrote it directed it starred in it never doing that again like acting in your own film you ever do that i did it with this one but i didn't have no lines though no dude i was like i had so many lines because you think that it'll make it easier because you're like well at least that way i know i'll get what i want right but no it's really hard yeah because i mean when i was at tech i did you know those early early short films where they're not necessarily great but you know you still make the best out of it sure so i had to act in them and i had lines but i look back at them now and i'm like oh my gosh like because pretty much it was one of those things where I wrote the the dialogue a week before and I'm yeah. trying to like memorize it. And I was like always fucking up too. man. There, there was a time where I thought I would try to be like acting in my films. I wanted to be an actor. But then you kind of learn like like acting and music is something that I've learned. Like as much as I love these things, this isn't my strong suits. You know, so I'd rather just focus on what I know. You're the man behind the camera. Not even that. That's Joel. I'm oh, just well. the man like shouting ideas into the wind <laughs> and hoping they happen. <laughs> I will say the one thing about being out there, I was out there for like 34 hours. And I was like, damn, I want to fucking bug. I want to, like, were we talking about acting classes? Was that me and you or was I some Yeah, talk- we were. Like, I'm going to start doing that and trying to do a little bit more acting. I think it's really fun. It seems, yeah, like I want to, I want a little bit more, you know? Well, because yeah. in big that. cities, uh, you know, they have people that teach them that are not in the college level. But I told Roy that I, we need to look out and see if there is some acting teachers here that will actually take the time and do some cool shit. Yeah. I think it's really fun. I just, I just don't think I'm that good at it. And, and I know I want to focus on directing. So, but when opportunities pop up, I'll be like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be there. I'm not going to go out of my way to do it. But, I yeah. feel you, man. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, dude. I, this was a, I appreciate you coming and doing this. Thanks actually, for having man. me, man. Yeah. If you ever, it's fun. when are you, you leaving? I'm leaving probably in a couple of days, two or three days, and then who knows when I'll be back. I'll, I'll be back for the premiere. So mm-hmm. around, around oh, then winter. we can do one. I would love to. Yeah, when we, awesome. we you do should the, come premiere. To the premiere. I want to. Yeah, I'll yeah. Be there. I mean, shoot, YouTube. he's an actor in the movie. I think he gets the contract. <laughs> yeah, well, YouTube, Brad. You know, like, you know yeah, gotta yeah. check it out. Do you live here? Oh yeah, you said mm-hmm. you go yeah, to yeah, yeah. I've been I've been yeah. here a few years. I, did you go out to the first Friday? Yeah, I was there last night. I think I saw you. Like, I, I, was, like, I, was, I was around yeah i think i saw you pull up but yeah man thanks for being here too dude appreciate course, it man. it's yeah. a pleasure it's a lot of fun uh, where can they follow you get everything um i guess you can follow at cool heavy videos and i'll be posting some some updates on there uh that's my my instagram what about cool you heavy man where can they follow you at um at william Corey butler on instagram um slide in link in the DMs. link in the bio i guess you, so you have like three instagrams yeah <laughs> i do different stuff on different okay instagram accounts. brad you got anything else to say out there uh follow me at bradley noel garcia and just here doing podcasts and look out for my new film there you go people lords okay. of film you well, it's all under snake pit youtube channel pirate radio snake pit rattle snake roy we have the patreon subscribe if you're listening for the first time please that's easy it's free and help us out a lot so thanks guys we'll see y'all